I know a lot of people are grinding it out today uh, for extensions, but you could take a, a few seconds of a reprieve. And um, I had a pretty interesting, you know, uh, post from one of my clients that I saw, which was really uh, eye-opening. And so, you know, in the history of me sort of having this company, and those of you guys that don't know me, you know, we basically help people that are accountants, CPAs, EAs, tax preparers, you know, basically figure out different ways to provide more value to clients, how to reprice, you know, existing engagements, add higher level services, get appointments with the right type of persona and client that might work well with you. And um, in all the history of doing this, most of what we did was we would teach people how to do, you know, like a consultation with a potential client, talk to them on the phone, meet them in person, have a conversation. And we changed all that a couple of weeks ago, probably about two, two months ago. And about two months ago, uh, we switched. So whenever you do a consultation with a potential client, it's a little bit different than you know what we used to do in the past. So, and I'm gonna give you guys what we used to do in the past. So for any of you guys that want, if you go to accountingtax.com slash enrollta, you're gonna get this tax planning sales script. It's a 90 page sales script you can see. It's pretty amazing quality. You're gonna get this in a GDoc format and a PDF format in four hours of training. So it's free if you go there, right? You can do that. I put the link in the, the thing above. But that's this is what we've always done. We've always done, okay, hey, here's a consultation with a potential client. And you go through and, and you, you do that presentation. And one of the challenges with that is it's just there's so much sort of interpretation and you have to remember so many things, right? You know, you're sitting across from a client and in that moment, like they're asking you questions, you know, you're supposed to be asking them questions. Are you sticking to the script? Even if you know the script, even if you have the script, you're getting thrown off. And so we kind of came up with this innovation that we released about two months ago where instead of doing sort of just a call or a presentation and sticking to a script, we started doing presentations. So whenever you basically sit down with a potential client, you sit down with that client and if it's a remote call, and a lot of times it is a remote call, you do a Zoom. So you, you get on a Zoom call and you actually share your screen and you go through and we have a 130 slide, de uh, 130 slide deck presentation. And we made a couple of different ones, uh, but we made one for tax planning. And basically it goes through, it's amazing. It teaches the client like, what's the difference between tax planning, tax preparation. Uh, it goes through a couple of examples of like, how somebody with literally no revenue on their business might need a tax plan and what would be the reason for that. How somebody that thought they had a great accountant they'd been working with for years that was in their family, but turns out they weren't so great because they were overpaying the taxes, talks about that. Talks about an example of some specific strategies you might do with somebody and it goes through a number of these different stories and then shows you how to sort of pitch, price, and present like going through deductions, legal entity structure, retirement, insurance, loopholes. It's this whole presentation, right? But that's not the point of today's sort of presentation, uh, my, my talk today. So I gave this to some of my clients and I said, this is the way we're doing it now. Because when you do this presentation, it works a lot better. You can get sort of, uh, sh the client can see more value. They understand more about what they're buying. They, they're they willing to pay a higher price, pay more upfront, all, all these other things. And so my clients went out and did it and crushed it, right? But here's the crazy part. So one of my clients went out and he did this presentation to a woman. And the woman said, ah, you know, this is great, Eric. This is great, but I need to go and I need to talk to two other people. I need to talk to a couple other people, right? And you guys have seen this, right? How many people, let me know in the comments, have you ever had somebody? I see we've got Michael, we've got Pandya, John, MD. If you, how many of you guys that are watching this right now have had somebody say, well, Christian, well, you know, I need to talk to a couple references, right? I need to talk to a couple references, okay? Now, I've, I've, we've got all sorts of um, things to say when someone says I need to talk to a couple references, and I'm happy to go through some of that today if you guys want, but that's not the reason I, I'm, I'm doing this today. So Eric ended up letting the woman go and do a couple of references, right? Now, the problem when you're doing tax planning with letting somebody go out to somebody else and talk to them is that most accountants aren't doing tax planning. So when you do tax planning, typically we'll charge 2,500 to 9,800 and it could be tens of thousands of dollars when you add an implementation and all these other things. But typically on that very first engagement, we're just getting the plan. And the plan is just education, right? Educating the client on here's what you can do to save money on taxes. We're not actually implementing it for them. We're not doing the tax preparation. We'll charge 2,500 to 9,800 for that. And what's funny is when you go through and you do that, like, and then they go and they say they want to talk to somebody else, they're going to go to somebody else that's probably going to charge like 650 bucks because they're just going to be doing tax preparation, right? And so that's exactly what happened. And so, you know, Eric has this woman, she's like, says, I need to talk to other people. He gets a little down, uh, right? And she goes to talk to two other people. <clears throat> she comes back a couple of days later. And, and I want to I wanna read this, right? Because it's just, it's just so good. It's just so good. 
And I just find it to be so indicative of really the struggle that most people are in that are, it has nothing to even do with tax planning and tax preparation, bookkeeping, accounting, CFO. It just has to do with the difference between people that are really trying to help clients at a high level that are really trying to do something special and people that are just going through the motions, right? Just going through the motions. And so I'm gonna read this post. So Eric says, I just got off the phone with a new tax planning client. Uh, she paid me a huge compliment about the tax planning presentation, right? So that's why I said, we're doing these tax planning presentations that I gave her, which is really a compliment to our community, he was saying. Um, he said, this is her first year using a professional for her taxes. And she called two other CPAs after talking to me. So she got off the phone, like I said, she went and talked to two other CPAs. And she said, or he said, um, she just assumed that their presentation would be like mine, but they weren't. And then here's the key part, right? Here's the key part. They just said, um, quote, it's not a big deal. We're just preparing your taxes, right? It's not a big deal. We're just preparing your taxes, okay? And these people had prices that were 70, 80% lower than his. They didn't do, and he says, they didn't do a diagnosis. They didn't give her stories. They didn't break down the value. They didn't give her estimated savings of working on a tax plan. He said, so grateful for the community helping me stand out from the rest. And I thought that was just an awesome post, right? And I think, you know, I, I talk to so many people and I, I, I don't, most people that are out there that have a CPA firm, have an accounting firm, doing tax preparation, uh, an enrolled agent or an unlicensed preparer, or whatever the spectrum of where you're at is, right? Um, the people that are out there, they don't have any bad intentions, right? Like these guys that, 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 that told the woman, oh, what are you, you're expecting a presentation? I mean, it's 650 bucks. We're just preparing your taxes, right? <laughs> but the problem is, is that it, it is sort of a big deal. And, you know, mo most of them, they have no malintent. There's, I'm sure these two CPA firms, right? These were CPA firms. I'm sure they have no bad intentions. I think they just, they're unaware of what they're doing. They're sort of walking around through life, going through the same motions of what they were taught at their last firm, and then they started their own firm, and then they're just they're just going through and sort of pecking away, you know, in Drake or ProConnect or whatever, the, right? They're just pecking away at this thing. And they don't really know what they're doing. They don't really know, you know, kind of what services they're providing, what the true value of what they're offering is. And there's sort of two categories, right? Because you've got some people that are like, you're not actually saving people money on taxes, right? And there's like this huge crisis of confidence, right? You're not saving people money on taxes, but they kind of think you are, right? Like they would almost go brag to their friends, like, oh, I got the best tax guy. Like, he's amazing. Like, let me tell you, he is so good. He charged 650 bucks, so cheap. 350 bucks, so cheap. You got to go to him, right? Meanwhile, you're sitting back there like, oh, I'm not actually spending any time on, oh, I'm not actually spending any time on tax planning. I'm just preparing the return. If they find out that I haven't actually helped them save money on taxes, they're going to hate me, right? And so you could be in that category of somebody who you're not really saving people money on taxes. Well, and, and you might sort of justify it in your mind because you're like, well, I'm meeting with them at the end of the year, so I am saving them money on taxes in accordance with what they did, right? But you're not helping them restructure things proactively. If we were to go back to them right now and say, hey, look, you're filing, you know, when you look at your 2018 year, if we would have gone on January 1st and restructured you from a tax perspective, we could have saved you like 15, 20, 30, 40,000 dollars. But now it's after the year end, I can't do that, but I can make sure to prepare your return. And I'm going to save you money just to make sure your return is properly prepared. That's different. That's different, right? And so you're, many of you guys are in that first category where you're like, okay, I am kind of saving them because I'm properly preparing the return and somebody else could mess it up. You know, all those unlicensed preparers or, you know, whatever, right? Somebody else could mess it up or they could do it themselves. They mess it up. And so you're justifying it because you're saying, well, I'm helping them do that. But the problem is, you know, that's not what they think they're getting. You know, that, this is the big sort of uh, problem in the culture, the small business sort of culture, is that most small business owners are out there bragging about you and they're telling their friends and their family how great you are and how much you save them money on taxes. When we know that uh, most of the time, the vast majority of the time, that's not true. They're j just preparing the return. And so there's this mismatch. And the crazy part about the whole thing is it's like this massive hallucination in the culture, right? Because the accountants aren't lying. Like they're not saying that they're doing something that they're not doing. They're just unaware that it could be better. They don't realize, oh my gosh, I could do it ahead of time. I could do it at the beginning of the year. I talked to a guy the other day and um, been in business since 1990. And he said, you know, my clients aren't gonna pay that much. There's no way they pay $7,500 for a tax plan. There's no way they would pay $2,000, you know, uh, $2,000 a month recurring. And I asked him, this guy, he was, um, 
been in business since the 90s, and I asked him, I said, he was referred to me by one of my, my existing clients, and I said, so my existing client here, if she were to sit down with one of your clients, here's how the conversation would go. And you told me already, I, I said, the guy said, you told me that you have a client that does seven million a year in sales, and you're charging him, how much did you say you charge him? He said 800 bucks a month. So he's charging him 800 bucks a month to do his accounting, and, and, and he's uh, doing seven million a year in sales law firm. Guy's making a lot of money. And I said, if one of my people goes and sits down with that guy, they're gonna say this. They're gonna say, okay, hey, Mr. $7 million law firm owner. Hey, great, we're gonna go through some questions today. Deductions, legal entity structure, retirement, insurance, loopholes. Oh, oh, okay, we're gonna go through all this. Hey, and um, Mr. Law Firm, how many years have you been making this much money? How many, how many years have you been making this level of income? And they're gonna say, well, uh, 10, 12 years? And you're gonna say, okay, hmm. And how many years have you had your current accountant? 20 years? <sighs> okay. Well, look, I can tell you right now that you know we just had a conversation today. I didn't even look at your returns. But based on you know where you're at right now, looking at deductions, legal entity structure, retirement, insurance, loopholes, tax cuts and jobs act updates, niche specific strategies, advanced strategies, ba just based on our call today, I haven't even looked at, the, at your returns. I would estimate, you know, you're on track to overpay by X amount in 2019, right? And it could be more than that if we were to decide to work together. And let's say it's 18,000, right? It's actually more than that. I would, I would estimate, I didn't talk to the client myself, but 7 million sales law firm, very profitable. So, okay, so he's on track to overpay 18,000. It's probably way more than that, right? But, and he's gonna say, and, and how long were you with your accountant? 10, 12 years and you've been making, or you know, how long have you had this amount of money, uh, made this amount of money, 10, 12 years, and you've been with that account 20 years? So take that 18,000 right in that client's head and go back every single year for the last 10, 12 years that he's overpaid. It's probably more than that, it's probably 30, 40 grand, doesn't even matter. The point is that, you know, that guy is not a bad guy. He's not a bad accountant, he's a CPA, he's not a bad CPA. He just doesn't know what he's doing. And, and it was a real shame because he was actually planning on retiring in a year and there's a real crisis in his mind because he has to think back on his career and ask himself questions, right? Like, did I really help my clients? Did I really get them results? Did I really make a difference for them? Or should I have done better? Should I have done better? And that is really, you know, uh, an important question. That is an important question. And it's, it is a, you know, difficult question to answer that he's going to have to answer for himself. Somebody says that the link was broken. That is true. I put it to accountingtax.com slash enroll. Sorry, I had a little space there. And so the question is, is he going to think back to his history? And is he going to say he helped his clients over the years? Or is he going to look back on history and say, oh my gosh, I didn't do, I didn't do as well as I should have. I need to change things now. And, and the big problem is for him, he's charging 800 bucks a month for somebody doing 7 million a year in sales. He's just simply not charging enough time to be able to actually help these people. He's not. And, you know, that's the big problem with this situation. It's not that people have bad intentions. It's not that they have bad intentions at all. It's that they don't know how to, number one, get a handle on what value they could provide for their client. So if you don't believe you're providing value, you feel super insecure asking for money, right? So you don't know how to provide value to yourself. It's just a tax return, right? It's just a tax return. It's just a tax return, right? So you don't know how, and, and some of you guys are actually creating value and you're just not charging for it, but I'm specifically dealing with the people that are not helping the clients, right? Right, right now. And I'll get to the others in a second. So you, you, you are not, you know, aware of how to provide value to the clients. Or maybe you are, but you're not, uh, how could I possibly spend that much time doing it? I don't know those things. Right? This guy's been in business since 1990 and he doesn't know how to do this. Only thing he knew about was like, well, I could do a late S selection, which he was charging like 200 bucks for anyway. Okay. So you don't know how to provide value yourself. And because you don't know how to provide value yourself, you, what are you going to ask for money for? money for what you're not providing any value right so you feel deeply insecure about increasing your prices and if you do you might do a five ten percent bump on a on the year as we're getting into january for next tax season inflation or whatever but you're not going to double your fees across the board you know or you're not going to charge separately for tax plans five ten grand a pop right and so when you look at it you know you number one don't know how to provide value yourself then you don't feel comfortable asking for more money right and then because you don't have those two 
there's no real need to go on the journey to discover how to get the client to see that value, right? Because there is no value and you wouldn't know how to charge more. It's just a whole mess, right? So what a lot of people don't understand about charging more money or charging a different price or going to another level per, you know, in terms of the value you're providing to, or the, 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 the value that you're extracting from a client relationship, it starts off with you actually providing more value, right? Like you can't, if you're charging six fifty for a business return, you're not gonna be able to charge $10,000 for tax planning just for doing the same thing. I mean, that's not gonna happen, right? Now, you may have to do a couple of more hours of work and that may result in $10,000 of planning, which is a very profitable compared to just preparing the return, but you do have to do something else. You have to get the client a better result. And so that's for those of you guys that aren't actually providing value and that's, that's the people, if someone says it's just a tax return, I already know right out of the gate, they're not providing value to the client. They're not doing proactive tax planning. They don't understand the, and, and by the way guys, like tax planning is just one of many components. You could turn a $650 business return into a client that pays $30,000, $40,000 a year if it's the right client and if you know what to do. Not every single return that's six fifty dollars could be $40,000 a year, but I've seen people, people do this every single week in our community. They take a $650 you know, business return, turn into a $35,000 a year client. Just bam, 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 all the time, okay? So now there's another category though out there of you guys where you actually are providing value, right? So you you actually, you're charging, let's say 650 for a business return, but you are doing tax planning, right? You're answering questions throughout the year. You're helping them with home office. You're helping them implement the Augusta strategy. You're helping them implement, you know, changing legal entity structure. You're helping them with retirement and the coordination with the financial advisor. You're helping them consider some more complex strategies, you know, some advanced strategies. You're going through all this stuff, right? And you're just answering these questions all year. And you are helping them save money on taxes. And actually they're pretty properly structured, right? They're pretty properly structured. And so when you have that going on and they're pretty properly structured, like you feel insecure because you're like, well, I haven't charged for this forever and I'm still charging 650 and I'm like losing money. And, and most of you guys, you know, you're, you're not actually, very few people out there actually losing money, but what you're doing is you're just sacrificing your time and your family, right? And, and you're not like enjoying what you do and you're just like slaving it away on the weekends or maybe you're freaking out on a day like today, right? Um, and so you as the owner, to avoid losing money, because if you were to actually hire staff and put bodies on these engagements and have them do the work and then try to take a profit, you would lose money, but you just massively sacrifice your own time, right? So you massively sacrifice your own time, your own stress levels, all these things. And you know, you end up kind of, that's how you end up making ends meet. So you've got to renegotiate the relationship with these clients if you're already providing this value. And you know, you do know how to provide value because you're doing it. And what you don't know how to do is ask for more money. And what you don't know how to do is to get the client to see that value separate from what you've currently done. Now, like I said, we've switched to this whole deck process, which is where we do the sales deck. And that's where uh, my client had the woman who's, who's, who went to two competitors and they said, it's just a tax return. It's just a tax return. It's just a tax return. Um, but for those of you guys that you know aren't working with us, if you go to accountingtax.com, the link was wrong, but I fixed it right now. Accountingtax.com slash enroll. This is a 90 page sales script on how to do a tax plan. And from right now to the end of the year, there are people, there are people, right, on this live stream right now, people on this live stream right now that will do $100,000 in cash sales between now and the end of this year doing tax planning for their existing clients. Not even, not even brand new prospects, right? So is that going to be you? And, and fine, fine, hey, don't work with Andrew, right? Don't work with me. Don't come to our company. By the way, this is free, so this ain't going to cost you anything. Accountingtax.com slash enroll and go there right now. But even if you decide not to work with me, it's not about me. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about look at your book of business. Look at the business returns. How many business returns do you have? How many Schedule Cs do you have? How many standalone 1040s do you have? Okay? Let's look at those, right? And, and how, many, how many monthly accounting clients do you have that are not currently on the tax side? Let's look at all those. Let's take the top 30% based on their income and let's do a check-in before the end of the year. Reach out to them. Message them right now. Reach out to them. Message them. Make sure things are all squared away on the tax side. When you meet with them, just read this. Just read it. Just read it. Just read it. Read it, read it, read it. Shh, just read it. If you just go through, piece by piece, piece by piece, step by step, question by question, and just read it. And if you don't want to charge, fine, don't charge. You don't want to charge, don't charge. 
but at least you get to help them go through and implement a couple strategies to save money on taxes. Do it for free. Wouldn't that be better, right? Because, you know, the problem is what you don't understand right now is what's standing between you and what you want is going out and having these meetings with these people, be them existing clients, potential clients, friends, family, network, and acquaintances. And I'm going to let you guys on a little secret. You want to know the secret? I don't want to do it either. I don't want to do it either. You know, I'm an accountant, just like you guys watching this today. I, I'm a CPA. I went and got a, a degree in university. I did not like doing sales and consultations. Did not like doing it, right? I remember uh, probably like 2013, 2014, I remember telling my wife, because I was making all sorts of excuses not to do sales, right? All sorts of excuses not to do sales. And I sat down, I told my wife, I said, babe, you know, sales is so stupid. It's like you have five appointments, you get one client, that's like a huge waste of time. It's like 80% of your time wasted. It's stupid, right? Stupid. Meanwhile, that was at a point in my life where we actually didn't have a trash can because I did not want to spend $20 to get a trash can. So all we, we had a bag under the sink, right? And a little one of those black sort of bags under the sink because I did not want to buy a freaking trash can, right? And I remember we didn't have a couch. And there's that picture you, many of you guys have seen floating around online from me where, um, you know, I didn't want to buy a couch. It was 250 bucks for the couch we wanted. Now I can't even imagine only spending $250 for a couch. Uh, but, you know, at that point in time, it was like, I just and I, there's a picture of me sleeping on the ground because I had we didn't have anywhere to lounge in our little one bedroom or studio actually apartment. And but this whole time when I was living in this sort of squalor, you know, compared to the life I have now, which is amazing. I think we have 35 full time team members. Um, we did a little over 10 million in sales last year. We'll have to see what we end up with this year. Uh, probably 13, 14, 15 million. We'll see how the year ends up somewhere in that range. Um, you know, when I look at that sort of change. When I was back there, no trash can. I was telling my wife that. Oh, sales is stupid. Sales is so stupid. Big waste of time. Blah, 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 right? But the reality of it is I was just making excuses because I was scared. I was scared. I didn't, have the, I didn't understand what to do. I didn't know. Nobody had ever trained me how to talk to somebody. I thought being good at sales really amounted to being like a good-looking real estate agent. You know? <laughs> I mean, literally. And I, I remember... I met this woman who was a, sort of a good saleswoman and she was telling me about prospects and leads. And I was like, prospects and leads? I was like, what does that mean? And I remember when she was saying prospect, all I could think about was just like a gold miner, like prospecting for gold in Canada or something. And I was just like, what, what is this lady talking about prospecting? I was like, what does that have to do with what I'm talking about? And then she was talking about leads, leads. And I was like, leads. And I was like, thinking like lead. Like, are we talking about the tips of pencils here? Like, what is she talking about? Prospects and leads. Mind you, this was after I'd worked at a big four accounting firm. I, had, I was a CPA at this point. I had a master's degree. I'd been to college. I did not know what a prospect was, and I did not know what a lead was. That is how like illiterate I was when it comes to basically running a small business and also doing you know taking care of the revenue portion of that business, right? Because when you look at your financial statements as an accountant, you got a balance sheet, income statement, right? The top of the income statement, that's the thing that flows through and creates the balance sheet. Like that's, that's where all the, like the top line on there is revenue. And all the little steps associated with revenue, I did not know what a prospect was or a lead was. I didn't know those words. I never heard them. Like, what am I living in? The like, living in a cage, living in a in a sort of a dungeon, right? And so, I think what really switched my mentality on it is that it's not about you. It's about the other person, right? And so, if you want to have some of these, if you don't want to have some of these appointments with your clients, that's fine. They're just going to go another year overpaying in taxes, and there's just another year there where somebody else might meet with them and actually give them one of these presentations, right? It's gonna happen eventually, right? The whole market is sort of moving more that direction where people understand that a little bit more. It's, it's you know, I know there's so many people out there that are just trying to compete on those, those three, $400, ooh, $200, oh, I get my price down, right? They're just competing on price. It, you know, for those of you guys that, that wanna have a, your own business, that don't wanna go big, like there's maybe some of you guys out there that wanna have the next blowout, you know, hundred dollar tax return tax returns for free company you know like but most of you guys that are out there that are watching this you you want to have a business you want to do five hundred thousand a million two million three million a year in sales doing tax accounting financial services you know you want to work with the bare minimum number of clients and serve them at the highest level right you could have 25 of the right clients and do a million a year in sales i had a woman the other day had five thousand clients doing a million a year in sales she wasn't even making a hundred thousand dollars income between her salary and net profit on the business because she built it wrong, it's all 1040s. And so, 
Look, I mean, it's not just a tax return, guys. That's why I want to shoot this today. It is it is like an opportunity to see inside of that person's financial life, particularly if it's a business owner, a Schedule C or a business return. Not every single person is going to be a thirty, forty thousand dollar year client, but a lot of them are. A lot of them are, and a lot more than you think. And sometimes you say, "Well, Andrew, now I've talked. My clients don't need this, you know, blah blah blah." I talk to them. You, you no, know, you haven't. You haven't. You haven't. If I were to force you to go through and set up appointments with all your existing clients between now and the end of the year, something would have changed. They would have opened up another business. Their spouse would have opened up a business. The business would have grown. They would have opened up another division. They would have gone in a different direction. They'd be looking at different priorities in their life. All of these things lead to some opportunity to restructure their business and their life to save them money on taxes, which then leads into many other services. That ta What I love about the tax plan is like I don't really even care about tax planning that much. I, it, tax planning is one tool. It's one little tiny tool to, to, to provide value to a client, get them on your side to see the value that you create so you can then offer a ton of other value, right? So the tax plan is the beginning. It's not the thing. It's just a tool to get a customer and to provide high value to a customer to then offer them many other things and, ex and, and really maximize the lifetime value of that client, maximize the value you can create for them and capture a portion of that for yourself. So as it's October 15th, I just want to shoot this quick video for those of you guys that are out there and whether you took somebody off of somebody else because they said it was just a tax return or whether you've been telling people it's just a tax return. I mean, even the standalone 1040s, you don't need to say that. You don't need to say it's just a tax return. You never know who that person might be. Uh, and the whole, how to handle a standalone 1040 is a whole other conversation. So um, I hope that this has been helpful for you guys. Um, it, it, for those of you guys that want free tax planning sales script right here, accountingtax.com slash enroll. I put the link above. Four hours of a video training. You can see, I mean, we did a great job with this script, right? So you can see how, how well we did here. All of this in here is going through and answering all the questions. So are you a CPA? Um, how do you know you can save me that much in taxes? Like, like, why doesn't my current preparer know about this? Like, like, how much time is it gonna take you? You're charging 7,500. Like, how much time is that really gonna take? Ah, I need to, I need to talk it over with my business partner. I need to talk it over with my spouse, right? All those questions. And so, even though we moved on to doing this sort of deck presentation, this absolutely still works. It does not work as well, but it is an incredible, this is better than, I mean, 99% of accountants out there. I'm never gonna be able to do uh, what you could do just after going through this. And, you know, I'll, I'll say one last thing before we wrap this up. I'm giving you this for free, right? Don't cost you anything. Don't cost you anything. I'm giving you for free. One of the, the, the things that I've used in my life is whenever I read a book, right? I read, I read books and, you know, whenever I read one, I, when I read it, I kind of think, let me imagine that this book is like the answer to everything I need in my life, right? So it is the ultimate source of truth and value given my current objectives. Right? So I've got these objectives in my life, and this book is basically a playbook for how I should reorient my life to meet my objective. And when I do that, I always try to try that hat on. And I might get to the end of the book and say, nah, I don't think it's really that helpful. But many times I'll get to the end of the book and be like, oh my gosh, this book was so helpful. I need to incorporate this component into my life. That's what this is. Now, you might choose not to opt in for this, right? Accountingtax.com slash enroll. You might choose to opt in for it and then never use it. You might choose to opt in for it and never log in. You might choose to opt in for it and watch the video trainings only once. But there are going to be a couple people on here that opt in for this for free. You watch, and free, guys. 100% free, right? The Kakashi anything. Four hours of training, 90 pages of a script. You're going to watch that, and you're going to watch it. 25 times. You're not going to watch it once. You're going to watch it 25 times. You are going to become incredible at sitting across from a business owner, defining the true value of what you do, understanding that yourself, understanding that that is worth a lot of money. And you are going to be good at positioning that to the client and asking for a lot of money and commanding, not demanding, commanding that from them. If you take it seriously. And it's just sitting there for free. There's these little tiny, you know, most good things in, in my life that I've come across, they're hiding in plain view, really. They're not... It's just that nobody's paying attention, right? It's sort of like um, if you ever talk, if you ever see like a woman who's got three kids, she goes into the mall, she just notices all the kids stuff, right? And then if you see another uh, person, another woman go into the mall and she's like a business owner, you know, uh, entrepreneur, she's just looking at the business stuff. She's not looking at the kids stuff. So if you're not paying attention to the things that are going to make a difference for you, and I'm telling you right now, if you're watching this and you've got a tax business, you've got an accounting business, and you've stuck on this call for this long, what in the heck are you doing? You need to get over here and get this thing. And it's, it's not even for you, it's not even for me, it's for the clients. 
So uh, with that being said, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this one up. I mean, honestly, this is, this is pretty huge value to give away for free today, but I'm happy to answer any questions. You guys have a question in the chat or you wanna message me one-on-one on LinkedIn. And I hope you guys have an, an awesome October 15th and we will talk again soon.